The average American produces 4.4 pounds of garbage per day. That adds up to about 1,600 pounds a year. But where does all this garbage go? And who can we count on to handle this logistical nightmare? Enter Salinas Valley Recycled. These are the people that take care of properly disposing of all of your garbage. But how do they do it? Let's take a tour around one of their facilities, the Johnson Canyon Landfill. Hello, my name is Patrick Matthews, General Manager with the Salinas Valley Recycles Organization. You're at the Johnson Canyon Landfill, located two and a half miles east of the city of Gonzales. This is where all the Salinas Valley refuse and recycling materials go uh, prior to processing or landfilling. So at this landfill, we can do lots of different things besides garbage. Behind me, you'll see our recycling center where we handle basic everyday recycling materials such as appliances, paper, cardboard, construction debris, uh, you name it, we can handle it here at the landfill. Here at the Johnson Canyon Landfill, we spend over $200,000 a year cleaning up litter and illegal dumping across the Salinas Valley. So it's very important when you come and make a visit to our facilities that you cover and secure your load before you come. We want to reduce litter and prevent uh, materials from flying out of your trucks when you're on the site. Helps us save money, put more of our money towards services for you. All right, here we are in front of our cardboard and rigid plastic recycling area. So if you're a business or a homeowner and you have a lot of extra plastics, tiny pots, uh, and other kids toys, as well as all of your old cardboard and your shipping materials, you can bring them here free of charge. Welcome to the Johnson Canyon ABOP. ABOP stands for antifreeze, battery, oil, and paint. If you have leftover automotive batteries, household batteries, rechargeable batteries, uh, motor oil, antifreeze, or latex paint, you can bring them here free of charge seven days a week. Here you are at one of the most popular areas of the MRC, Materials Recovery Center, Johnson Canyon Landfill. Here you can bring your old and used mattresses and box springs, used tires, and electronic waste, including televisions, old recording equipment, computer equipment, and anything electronic. Here we are at the used clothing and textile donation area of our MRC. In this area you can bring your used clothing, bedding, towels, and other textiles. The clothing will be cleaned and redistributed to low-income communities, and the rest of the material will be repurposed for other types of textile uses. We're at the Johnson Canyon Landfill Gas to Energy Plant, operated by Amoresco. Amoresco is our agency's partner in this project. So as you may know, the garbage we throw away in the landfill, the food, the organic material, as it starts to decompose in the landfill, it generates methane. Across the entire landfill, we have hundreds of wells dug into the garbage that actually extract that methane and it's brought down here to the power plant where it's converted into electricity. This plant can produce 1.5 megawatts of electricity output. That is enough electricity to power 1,000 to 1,500 homes year round. This is an exciting project and an exciting way that we reuse everything that comes to this landfill, including the methane coming from your garbage. Welcome to the Johnson Canyon Landfill. What you see behind me is Module 7. Landfills are typically built in pieces, or what we call modules. This is the seventh module of 10 planned modules for this facility. This is the largest construction, constructed module that we've had. This one will last us approximately six years for interim life. And down the road, once all the modules are built, we'll again go back on top of the entire site and do additional filling to fill out the remaining life of the site. A modern landfill is made of many, many layers. It starts with well-compacted soil, topped off with two feet of clay, 
and then what we call geosynthetic clay liner, which is a very, very fine powdery substance that is wedged between fabric and provides a lot of protection for water leaking out of the landfill. On top of that goes a 60 mil layer of polyethylene plastic fused and seamed across the entire 10 acres of the site. After that, there's a drainage layer placed on top that allows the bottom of the landfill to collect any liquids that are leaving the landfill. Those liquids are called leachate, and they collect at the base of the landfill and are pumped up to a storage container. On top of that drainage layer goes two feet of protective soil, which protects the underlying multi-layer liner system from being punctured by garbage, sharp objects, or wood. Once that's completed, then the landfill can begin accepting all types of materials for disposal. The current landfill has between 30 and 35 years of remaining life. The area to my right, the large hill behind the new hole or, or module 7 that you're looking at, that is our last completed landfill area. It is almost at final height, but there again will be some additional garbage placed on that at the end of the landfill's life. The six modules we've already completed represent those last 40 to 50 years of operation. Here we are on top of Module 3, one of the older areas of the Johnson Canyon landfill. I'm standing on over 150 feet of garbage. If you live in the Salinas Valley, I'm standing on something you've thrown away over the last 20 to 30 years. When we receive your garbage here, we do several things with it. The idea is we take your garbage, we spread it out in very thin lifts of about two feet thick, and then we roll it over with a giant compactor. The compactor is a giant piece of equipment with large, heavy teeth, and it weighs over 140,000 pounds. That drives back and forth over the garbage, compressing it and compacting it, allowing it to get one of the highest densities uh, possible in this industry uh, of 16 to 1,700 pounds for every cubic yard of airspace in the landfill. So to conserve that airspace, after we're done placing your garbage at the end of the workday, we cover the landfill with tarps. That preserves space instead of using soil, which is the traditional old-fashioned method. Every seven days, though, we will come back over that fresh garbage and we'll place six to 12 inches of soil. The area we're standing on right now is an area that is what we call interim closed, meaning that we're not gonna be back up here placing garbage probably for the next 30 or 40 years. Uh, at that point, uh, when we close a site for long term, we'll actually place at least two feet of soil. So this area we're standing on right now has about two feet of cover soil on it and it's gonna stay in place and look like this uh, for the next uh, several decades until we're ready to come back on top and begin filling the final lift of the landfill, which is the top deck area we're standing on. All right, the area behind me is our organics stormwater pond. This is the area that collects stormwater and water that's coming off of our composting and organics preparations area. This pond is lined with the same plastic material that we use to line the landfill. That protects the environment, it protects the dirty water coming from our compost operation from seeping into the groundwater, and it allows us to store this water and actually reuse it in the composting operation itself. The area you see behind me is a receiving area for mixed construction and demolition material. In the Salinas Valley, the majority of this material is actually either roofing material or wood material. As we'll see later, our plans are to begin to sort through this material to recover the wood, most importantly, because that's part of our organics program. Today, what you see behind us is just a sample of that material uh, that we stockpile and are preparing to process.
Behind me you see our new sorting line. This line is designed specifically to help us recover organic materials such as wood and lumber from construction debris. It also will allow us to sort out organic material we may find in rich loads coming from agricultural processors so that that material can be diverted to composting and landscaping uses. Here we are at Johnson Canyon's concrete, asphalt, and porcelain recycling area. All the material you see behind me will eventually be ground up and used for various aspects of road construction, either on the landfill or sold to contractors to prepare areas to receive asphalt and concrete. We're at the Johnson Canyon Depackaging Facility. This is an area where we accept produce packaged from the agricultural industry, and we bring it in and we actually remove the material mechanically from inside bags, clamshells, and other types of packaging we see for typical produce in the grocery store. We're right here on the pad where our loads get dropped and where we clean them out and remove the contaminants from the loads. And most contaminants are either large cardboard and uh, large plastic bags. Plastic bags we don't want because they go through the depackager and they get caught up in our machinery because they're too elastic. Other uh, contaminants such as uh, nylon strappings that come in and uh, bits and pieces of metal and plastic that come from pallets and wood that uh, get thrown in with the mix. Once the hopper is uh, filled with the packaging material, the conveyor takes it into the separator and it drops it into the separator chamber which contains uh, a numerous paddles that spin and uh, release the material from the packages and separates it. And in the bottom we have screens which we have right now I think are inch and a half holes which pushes the organic material down into a separate chamber which leads to a conveyor belt, which leads to our organic release point. And uh, the garbage, once the garbage is, is, is separated from the organic material, it goes out one conveyor and the organic material goes through another conveyor. And that's how everything gets separated. And the organic material comes out as a slurry. We call it a salsa because it looks like a green salsa. And uh, that's what we use for the composting. The wood waste that we recover from our sorting operation will go to the stockpile right behind me. That stockpile is material that is going to be ground up and turned into landscape material like chips and colored chips that can be used in industrial, commercial, and residential landscape projects. Some of that material is also going to be going to our compost operation as well. Green waste is the material that you put in your green cart at home and includes grass clippings, leaves, weeds, and tree prunings. This material, once it's received at our facility, is converted into compost and other landscape products. The reason it's important for us to recycle green waste is that when green waste and yard waste and food is put into the landfill, it decomposes and becomes methane. Instead, we take that material and convert it into useful landscape and soil amendment products for our homes and our agricultural industry. Welcome to Salinas Valley Recycle's brand new aerated static pile composting facility. This is a new state-of-the-art facility that allows us to compost all the organic material collected in Salinas Valley in a very cost-effective, efficient way. It's not the same old style of composting we've seen in the past. This system consists of an air bed that allows us to pump air into the organic material, which speeds up the composting process. It allows us to create compost in about half the time of a traditional system of windrows and static piles. So on my right, you'll see compost that's currently an active uh, process right now. This is what we refer to as the high air system. This is where we're pumping more air into the 
uh, brand new material to really get it to compost quickly. To my left, we'll see that in just a moment, you'll see an area we call the low air system. So once the material in the high air system has reached a very high temperature for three days, we're assured that we've reduced all the pathogens, anything that we don't want to remain in the compost. Once that's occurred, we put it on the low air side, continue to pump air through it, but at a much lower rate to allow the compost to finish its process. At the end of 30 to 45 days, we now have finished compost ready for final processing and eventually marketing. Thank you again for visiting the Johnson Canyon Landfill. We at Salinas Valley Recycles are striving every day to change the way we handle our waste, find better and more innovative ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle the things we throw away every day. We want you to be part of that. So thank you very much for coming here, and we hope to see you again very soon. Bye.